until you have signed a contract you don't have a house please do not pay any money until you see a place to avoid you biting your finger think about it what are the chances that an agent will actually give you back the money i literally saw this place on friday and by sunday i had already moved my things in here exactly risky that's risky you guys like my sisters were like let it be hot on the market let it go do not live with any landlord <laughs> don't do it you don't want to be a victim of what i ordered versus what i got read that description like your life depends on it okay that might be a bit extra welcome to another video of my channel welcome to another sit down video of my channel this is my first sit down video for the year 2024 and i'm really excited and it's going to be my second video for my house hunting series i already posted one last year which was my house hunting experience and if you haven't watched that i'm just going to leave the card up here so you can tap on that and then go and watch it so in today's video i'm going to be giving you guys tips tricks and hacks for house hunting in the uk when i was going through my whole house hunting experience i was like you know what i'm actually going to like write down things that i've actually taken notes of that would help people when they're doing their own house hunting and then you know for next time that i would want to house hunt those are things that i would look out for to make the process like seamless and i hope that you pick at least one or two points that you didn't know about before that you'll be implementing in your house hunting or sharing with people when they're doing their own house hunting without further ado let's get straight into the video so the first tip i have is checking multiple websites and platforms you guys don't be afraid to you know broaden your search don't be afraid to try different platforms even if you've not tried it before or you're not so sure about how it works you can always go to youtube watch how to use a platform or ask around so the five different platforms and websites that i used were spare room zoopla open rent right move and facebook I don't know if you know any others that you can share please feel free to drop it in the comment section so that people that are watching would also see other platforms that i didn't mention but these five are the ones that i used and i'm familiar with and i thought to like share with you guys i would say one of the importances and benefits of using different platforms is your chances of finding somewhere actually increases think about it this way imagine you're using just one website or just one platform the chances of you seeing other options are actually limited than if you're using five different platforms to actually like check for somewhere that you'd want to move into so just i know it might be a bit stressful and overwhelming but like at the end of the day you want to find somewhere that you're comfortable to call home and somewhere that you're comfortable to go to after like a long stressful day so that's tip number one i would say make sure that you're checking multiple platforms keep your options open don't be too scared to search if you're a bit overwhelmed take breaks you know do it in sections maybe you decide okay today i'm going to focus on this website or for today i'm going to do one two three or you know just pace yourself and make sure that you're not overwhelmed in the process so that you can actually be as efficient as possible in finding a place for tip number two i would say pay for exclusive viewing is important so for example spare room that's where i actually found my place you have the option of paying a premium fee on spare room so that you're able to see places that have been put up for rent as soon as they've been uploaded by the landlord or the agent but then i had to pay for that subscription just so that i could see places as soon as they were dropping so that's an advantage if you know that you really want to increase your chances of getting somewhere that you actually like and you're comfortable you know living in i'll say it's important you pay for those add-ons so that you can get exclusive access to like places as soon as they drop and you're able to speak to landlords and agents as soon as they're dropping these places because you wouldn't be able to speak to them immediately until like a couple of days have passed and the ad has been on the website for a while so the chances of you getting somewhere that you actually like again is reduced if you don't do this because most times as places are hot and they're dropping and people have access to that premium subscription they're going for it they're going to be paying for it immediately so i'll definitely advise if you can pay a fee or if you're able to do a subscription to get like access to exclusive places or access to places that have just dropped sweetheart go for it i can assure you it's worth it trust me like go for it because for example where i am right now i would say the whole transaction and everything literally happened in like a week so I might have seen the ad, I think on a Monday or Tuesday, and I messaged the landlord and we got talking and then we decided to schedule a viewing. And my viewing was on Friday. I literally saw this place on Friday and by Sunday, I had already moved my things in here. Exactly. So imagine if I didn't 
just sacrifice and pay that extra fee just to be able to have access to landlords quicker than usual i most likely might not even be here right now so sometimes you just have to sacrifice you just have to go for it so yeah i would definitely advise if you're able to pay for a subscription that allows you access landlords earlier or see places earlier than usual now my third tip is read the description of the place and ask questions that's very important make sure you read read that description like your life depends on it okay that might be a bit extra but like actually go through it read what they've put out there you know how many bathrooms it says how many rooms it says is this an all-female house is this a mixed house are pets allowed make sure you read and ask questions too you guys it's very important because one of the houses i went to view when i was still searching and doing my thing before i went to view the house let me just say this the agent had told me it was an all-female house and i was fine with that i didn't mind because i mean i didn't mind being in a mixed house but definitely i would have preferred a female household only right so i decided to like you know message the landlord and tell him i was ready to book a viewing to go and see the place my mistake was i should have asked necessary questions but then you learn as you're going right because i mean i didn't know that but now i know better and now i'm telling you guys so that you guys don't find yourself in the same situation right but then when i got there and i viewed the house and i was even about to pay the holding deposit and pay for my rent and the deposits for that house the guy was like oh was i told that it's an all-female house i was like yes i was told about that and i'm happy with that he now said oh that also means that guys can't come and visit and i was like huh so i was like that means my cousin can't come my friends can't come i was just like okay and then the guy was like yeah because of you know some reasons with someone in the house i was like that's fine i mean i'm lucky that he told me before but like this is why questions should be asked just so that you're sure about what the household rules are because there's some places that will say they want a vegetarian and i mean i'm not a vegetarian i love beef so you know just things like that some places will say oh you have to be comfortable with living with pets so make sure you go through the description you read it properly you ask necessary questions that brings me to another point you guys this is description thing is very important because in the same way that another house i went to view what he said in the ad was it's two bathrooms and it's four rooms right so basically two people share a bathroom i got there tell me why i saw two toilets but one bath right so the person was like oh well i mean it's kind of like it's not kind of like anything it's a different case if in the description you wrote two toilets and one bath i'll know that okay x i'm not going to view this place but i already made my way there and then when i saw that i now had to ask and so just make sure you're asking questions make sure you ask if it's a house that has the bills included because i mean do you want to be paying bills separately or do you just want to pay it in your rent personally i rather just pay for my bills in my rent i know that okay for the month i'm not paying anything like except for things that i want to buy or things that i'm spending my money on that has nothing to do with my rent right so just make sure you ask for if the bills are included proximity to a bus stop or a train stop is also important what kind of household is it is it mixed or is it you know single gender household kind of thing ask those questions if visitors can come if people are allowed to sleep over if you can have friends and you know just make sure that you ask the necessary question i feel like this would actually help you cut down and filter out places that you're not even going to bother wasting your time to go and view you get so if you ask those questions beforehand you wouldn't be like me that went all the way there and then found out but then again i mean you know it's fine it's life we learn and we grow so that was something that stuck in my head i was like you know before viewing any other place i have to ask questions i feel like this happened to me by like house five house six so when i was doing house seven and eight i asked questions that would either make me go and view the place or would just make me know that okay this is not an option the fourth tip i have is use filters to make your search easy what i mean by use filters have a budget right figure out okay this is what i'm willing to pay is it bills included or bills not included if it's bills included and you have a budget put that in the filter so it makes your search tailored to that right so that you're not going through and scrolling and like filtering things and then you might see something you like but then as you're reading through the description you're finding out that oh actually it's like 200 pounds above my budget so make sure you put filters for like your budget make sure you put filters for proximity to work if you want to you know find somewhere that's closer to your job 
put your commute time there if you want somewhere that is a bit further because you just want you know that gap and you want a whole different vibe from where you work and when you leave you can also put that there so just make the necessary adjustments and tailor your filter to you to your needs do you want a house that has four bedrooms do you want a house that has two bedrooms three bedrooms do you want a house that has a shared bathroom or do you want an ensuite so ensuite is basically when you have your own bathroom in your own room so it just depends on what you want so i feel like including those filters in your search would actually help it tailor it to your taste so that you're not scrolling and going through you know hundreds of places and then you're not even seeing anything and you're wondering are you going to find anything so remember to always tailor your search to what you're actually looking for to make sure that you're saving time and energy on what you're searching for so do you want to be in an all vegetarian house or do you want to leave that open do you want a situation whereby you're living with your landlord or living out i'm definitely going to get to that point that's a very important filter to make use of guys is very important but yeah so just make sure that you tailor your search to what you want and what you're comfortable with to just save time and energy on searching for places the next tip i have is arrange viewings it's very important apart from a situation whereby you get pictures and videos of the place or if you have like a virtual viewing because sometimes they do virtual viewings whereby you call the person on whatsapp on like a video call and then they take you around and show you everything and whatnot right i mean if you don't have the time to go that's fair but at the same time risky that's risky you guys like imagine me showing something else and then you paid and you get there and then you're seeing something else you don't want to be a victim of what i ordered versus what i got you don't want that you don't want that <laughs> so yeah it's very important arrange a viewing like I mean sometimes there were houses that i actually wanted to go and view but like the timing was just off and i'm just like i'm not going to risk paying for a place that i haven't set my foot in to go and see no it's the same way that house i spoke about the all-female house right the sink they didn't have like the drainage cover on it if i didn't view it i wouldn't have known do you, you understand what i mean like the pictures that were online didn't show that part of the bathroom it was just the shower and the toilet so if i didn't see the actual sink i wouldn't have known that that was uncovered right so it's important that you arrange a viewing so that you're not one of those people that is experiencing what they actually thought they were going to get versus what they actually got because some of these places are too good to be true because you find out that some places would actually use pictures of the building or the apartment as of when it was first made right along the years months or whatnot people have used it it has depreciated have they refurbished the place have they made it suitable for another tenant to come in you might not even know so i mean you've seen pictures online and you're like oh this place looks really good it looks clean it looks new but you're going there and it's nothing close to what you were seeing online so make sure you arrange that view in don't feel pressured i know this sounds easier said than done and you know it might sound like oh because i'm settled now and oh i'm comfortable and happy but no think about it this way i would actually rather continue searching for a place that for me to not view a place or see what a place looks like and actually go for it because chances are you might find out that you're not entirely comfortable or happy in that space but then you've already paid for it you've already agreed to live there and you've already made up your mind that okay this is where i'm going to be but then you haven't even seen it yet so to avoid surprises to avoid you saying had i known to avoid you biting your finger please just view a place before you pay for it or before you move in there that's very important so this leads me to my next point do not pay any money until you see a place don't do that you guys don't be pressured don't feel rushed to do anything by any agent or any landlord think about it this way everybody's trying to do what's best for them the landlord the agent they want money that's they're, they're putting themselves first that's their own interest right but put your own self first think about yourself think about what makes more sense think about what is more practical and logical to do right when i was house hunting and i was just i think two weeks in the pressure was actually there like i was feeling like i wasn't going to find anything what's happening am i going to find a place i like i finally found somewhere i liked which is actually not so far from where i am right now and it was new it was clean it was a four bed two bath and then one room had an ensuite so in my head the kitchen was huge like there was enough storage space i just really loved it and the room had like a balcony where you could stand out and look out and beautiful view you're seeing the terms right and this guy kept telling me oh i have to pay now i have to pay a deposit now i should just pay the deposit and if i don't like the place then he'll refund me what are the chances that he was going to do that that was risky 
I hadn't even seen the place. He showed me videos and pictures and told me, oh, I shouldn't worry in two weeks, it'll be ready. And you know, if I don't pay now, I might not even be able to move in there because people want it and it's hot on the market, da 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 da. My sisters were like, let it be hot on the market, let it go. When you find yours, you find yours. Because imagine I had actually paid for that place and I went there and I saw it and I didn't like it. Am I really going to tell him, oh, I don't like it, please give me back my money? What I think about it, what are the chances that an agent will actually give you back the money? All they would say is, oh, but this is what you saw in the video, or well, sorry, you don't actually like it, and it would have, or it would have been a whole process of a back and forth trying to get my deposit back, and so I just told myself, no way on earth am I even going to pay for anything without seeing it. It's like, it's a different case if I go there, I see it, I like it, and I pay the holding deposit. Meaning they can't advertise it for anyone else as I've paid the holding deposit until I pay the full deposit or I say I don't want it anymore. So that's the only case. But then you paying the actual deposit for the house and the holding deposit only for you to go there and say that, you know, things are not what it seems like. Don't bother, there's no point. Like, that was one thing that, you know, I was really worried about. I was like, should I just pay it and then... I mean, if I like it, fine. If I don't like it, I'll just manage. My sisters were like, you know, do you want to live somewhere that, you know, you go out and then you're coming back home and you're not really excited to be home? No. Like, right now, every single time I go out, I look forward to coming back home because I'm happy with my space. I'm happy with my flatmates. Everything is just perfect. Everything is nice. I mean, sometimes it might seem impossible, but trust me, patience, like, just be patient and be positive in your thinking just see it as i know i'll find a place i like i'll be happy there instead of seeing it as would i find a place or would i be happy no just be positive keep going keep pushing sometimes you might even be overwhelmed if you are take a break like there was a time whereby for a whole week i wasn't even searching i just took a break because it can be very overwhelming talking to multiple people at the same time checking through different websites you're going for viewings you're not even finding anything you like you might just you know feel like i might be going to settle down trust me you will it seems crazy but i can assure you because it's a different thing when you're in that situation and when you've come out when i was in that situation i couldn't have done this video i wasn't even composed enough to express myself most times as to how i felt about house hunting so now that i've experienced it and i've gone through that i can now testify that definitely you'll be fine and you'll go through that too so yeah make sure that nobody's pressuring you to drop any money before you see any place because like i said everybody is protecting themselves and everybody is putting themselves first so the agents and the landlords will definitely do anything to get their money my next advice for you is do not live with any landlord <laughs> don't do it i'm laughing you know, but don't actually do it like you no know, it's better you go for the live out landlord option than for you to go with the live in landlord option because sometimes they might have crazy rules and imagine living with someone you don't feel entirely free because you know they own that house it's not like i'm saying you're going to vandalize their property or do crazy things or just be reckless but like it's different because there are some times that landlords do things that are not even in the contract imagine living with someone and it's their own house and the contract doesn't i mean as we're grown like this now if i decide that i want to go out by 11 pm with a friend and you know we're going to have a girl's night out and everything i can do that but imagine living with a landlord and the person says oh they shut their door by 11 pm and they're not comfortable with you going out da, 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 da. and if you've gone out you have to stay out that's possible would it be on the contract not necessarily it might not be on the contract but then you've already moved in you've already paid you already lived there and they might now be bringing out popping out new rules and guidelines to follow and procedures and you actually don't want that or some might say oh they're not comfortable with you bringing friends over they might not have had an issue before but then they might just feel like, oh, like, why do you always have friends over? Not necessarily even sleeping over, just coming to visit, right? And they might be like, oh, they're not comfortable with how many people or who is coming over, da, da, da. It's just different. Not to say that sometimes your flatmates might not feel uncomfortable, but the chances are they are in their own room, they're in their own space. If they're in a shared area in the house, you might not necessarily, like, you know, be bumping at each other and all. But, like, when it's a landlord and it's their own thing and it's their own property... They might feel entirely different as to how they choose to like govern the house if they're inside as opposed to being outside because if they're outside they don't really know who is coming over to see you who your friends are what time you're going out or you know are you in the kitchen by like 11 p.m and all not to say that you should be a nuisance living with flatmates no please don't do that like don't make living uncomfortable for other people just because you want to be reckless no don't do that 
obviously because you can obviously go downstairs to your kitchen and do stuff and you know decide to be quiet and just do what you have to do and leave but then imagine living with someone that everything you do they just want to pick at that it's like some people actually do that so with these few points of mind i hope i've been able to convince you and not confuse you that leave out landlord is the best option don't do leaving <laughs> I've actually heard like people say crazy stories, like crazy experiences they've had when they've been living in, with a landlord and you know how they make rules, there's restraint and they're just uncomfortable and so don't put yourself in a situation so that you're not coming onto YouTube or TikTok doing a video as to <laughs> what my landlord did to me. But yeah, just make sure that you give that gap, there's that gap so that no one is overdoing or no one is stepping on anyone's toes yeah this leads me to my final point the very important point until you have signed a contract you don't have a house please it's the same thing as a job even until you have signed a contract the job is in yours because it's just word of mouth it's just okay yeah the house is yours no have i signed a contract is there something binding us to say okay if you default or if i default this is what's going to happen if you have not signed a contract please keep searching even if someone has said oh i would send a contract da, 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 just keep searching because i know situations whereby people have been told oh yeah we'll keep the house for you the house is yours i'll send the contract and you're waiting 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 and you never get the contract so what are you going to do as you stop searching you stop going for viewings you know you've just been there because you've put all your hope into this place it's so risky it's just so dangerous like keep searching keep going for viewings until you've signed your contract then after you've signed you can now say okay you know if any other person wants to invite you for a viewing just let them know that oh unfortunately you found a place now but thank you for getting back to me right because you have places whereby i mean they might decide to do a search or they're not comfortable with your reference or the person isn't comfortable with the amount of money you're earning per month or per annum and they just feel like they don't want to give it to you anymore even if you've concluded that oh yes you're happy da 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 always cushion yourself for you know slip ups don't don't leave your don't expose yourself that's how i'm just going to put it don't expose yourself just be prepared always have a plan a plan b plan c even like sometimes you need that plan c is even important to have that plan c so make sure that you're still actively searching you're still going for viewings you're looking until you've signed that contract until you've signed it and the landlord has signed it and there's been an agreement that yes this is my house <laughs> but other than that keep searching keep looking keep going for viewings keep your options open just make sure that you end up going for what you actually really want and you're comfortable just to put this here the last i mean this is not a tip but this is just to like let you guys know that when you're house hunting you actually have to compromise trust me in anything you do in life really there has to be some form of compromise let me bring out my economic side opportunity cost what are you willing to forgo to get another right what are you willing to let go of to have more access to another thing do you understand like personally ideally i wanted to live in like a two bed or a three bed at first right but then the costs finding a place how ideal and practical was that you know i just moved to this country i want to save I want to be comfortable. I don't want to be spending half of my salary on my rent. No, 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 no. That was one thing I didn't want to do. Like, I didn't want to spend a huge chunk of my salary on my rent. You understand? So I just had to compromise that, okay, getting a house that has more people in it, the chances of the bills being more affordable was higher than me finding a two bed or even living by myself right now at this stage of my life. That would just be too much of a financial burden right now. So, Think about it this way. What are you willing to sacrifice? So in my head, I was like, you know what? I don't mind living with more people and I'm comfortable and the place is clean. The kitchen is nice. The bathroom is nice. And I'm able to save money so that when I eventually find a place that I really like and I can afford comfortably, that I'm not over calculating how much I'm spending on rent, I would eventually move. So that's one tip I'll say. And in terms of also compromising, I initially wanted an ensuite, right? And I found one. But then again, I didn't like the kitchen. The kitchen wasn't clean. The communal area too wasn't nice. And what's the point of living somewhere that you have your bathroom in your room, it's nice and everything, but like you're uncomfortable to cook in that house. Wouldn't I eat? 
and I feel like everybody that knows me knows that I cook a lot I love to cook I love to eat food I love to cook for people and you know food is one of my ways of expressing how I feel and my love and you know so a kitchen is very important for me so I was just like that's something I wasn't willing to compromise on so I rather go to a house where I have to share a bathroom with at most one person okay one person and then I did that and I'm happy it's nice it's clean so that was one compromise I had to do another compromise is your commute time are you willing to commit longer to work and find somewhere that you're comfortable in and you're happy in or would you rather stay somewhere that's closer to where you work and you're not even happy going home those are things you have to think about am I willing to you know increase my budget to find somewhere I'm more comfortable in and I'm happy in or do I want to keep my budget as an average and I'm still happy am I willing to share a bathroom with one person or two depending on how you feel I mean the most is one I can do so am I willing to do that instead of getting a place that's really expensive and it's unsweet but like the bills are just too much for me to handle right now am I willing to commit longer to work and live somewhere that I'm very happy and comfortable in or do I want to live close to work and you know I'm not really that excited where I am and I'm just managing so those are things that you also have to think about those are just a few of the tips and tricks that I thought to share with you guys that you know came to me in my house hunting experience and after my house hunting experience so I hope that you found a few of them useful and you're going to also share with people that you think would need this information for when they're house hunting or if they are currently house hunting i hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any suggestions or if you have anything you'd like to add feel free to drop that in the comment section and just let people know things that have helped you or things that you know you took note of that would be beneficial to people and yeah you'll see me in my next video stay tuned for more premium content on my channel i love you guys so much bye